Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 46. Uh, the title of this discourse is The Great Discourse on Taking Up Practices. This is somewhere related to the Middle Discourses 45, which was the shorter discourse on the taking up of the practices. This is a greater discourse uh, on taking up the practices. And now here, uh, it starts with Buddha asking a very, very fundamental question, which is there in, in all of us also. Right? Buddha said that mendicants, sentient beings typically have a wish, desire and hope that if only unlikable, undesirable and disagreeable things would decrease and likable, desirable and agreeable things would increase. But exactly the opposite happens to them. What do you take to be the reason for this? Right? So this is the question for us also. That we want things to, to be happening in a certain way but you know, opposite things happen. And things which we do not have, want that happened. And we do all these rituals and all these techniques and all these, you know, um, like law of attraction and all these techniques, right? But what happens is you want something, you put all the effort into that and then something other, other thing happens. So here I was expecting that Buddha would talk about something around the, you know, law of karma and all those things. But here Buddha is talking about the, the, the practices because this was intended to mendicants. So Buddha is talking about the practice that you follow, right? So it has definitely it's for the Americans, but it has lessons for us also. So let us understand. I will just share my learning summary. The link to the entire discourse is there in the description. Do please read the discourse at your end also. And whatever insights you get, do please share in the comment section, right? So now Buddha says that uh, uh, Buddha says that first Buddha talks about the unlearned person. That the unlearned person, there are two kinds of people. So Buddha divides them. Unlearned person who is not in the teaching of the Buddha, they don't know what practices they should cultivate and foster and what practices they should not cultivate. So they cultivate and foster the practices that should they should not and they don't cultivate and foster the practice that they should. When they do that, unlikable, undesirable and disagreeable things increase and likable, desirable and agreeable things decrease. Why is that? Because that's what it's like for someone who doesn't know. So if a person is not learned, not in the teachings of the Buddha, so he doesn't follow the right teachings, the right path, he does all the wrong things, then what will happen is the wrong results will follow. right? Whereas a wise person, wise person know the practices that they should cultivate and they do those practices. And they avoid the practices that they don't, that they should not cultivate. Now, what are those practices that Buddha, talk, Buddha is talking about? Buddha is talking about four practices. First practice is the practice that is painful now and result is also pain. Second practice is pain, practice is pleasant now but results in pain. Third practice is painful now but result is good in the end, ple future pleasure. Fourth practice is which is pleasant now and also results in future pleasure. Right? So we will understand all the four. Right? So now, So basically, it's I'm just uh, skipping the things which are you know too lengthy or verbose. I'm just bringing out the essence here. Right. So Buddha is talking about the dis that you know dis jo, the people who are not uh, very wise, who are unlearned, they cultivate practices which are painful and result in pain, painful, uh, uh, pleasure ple 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 pleasurable but result in like. Practices which are resulting in pain, they cultivate that. And wise perform those practices that are that are either painful or pleasant now, but they will result in pleasure. So that is the division. Right? Now, now, now the coming to the first practice. The first practice is the practice that is painful now and result in future pain. Right? What are, what are those practices? It's when someone in pain and sadness kills living creatures, steals and commits sexual misconduct. Right? They use speech that's false, divisive, harsh, nonsensical and they are covetous, malicious with the wrong view. Because of these things, they experience pain and sadness and when their body breaks up after that, they are reborn in a place of loss, a bad place, the underworld, hell. That is a way of taking up the practices that is painful now and results in future pain. So, if we examine this, what it is hinting at? It's hinting at first the five precepts. Do not kill, do not steal, do not lie, do not do sexual misconduct, do not drink. Right? Somewhere around that, it's linked to that. 
but mostly it relates to practices which are the wrong noble eightfold path right like wrong action wrong speech right wrong uh, 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 wrong speech wrong action wrong livelihood that means i am repeating it again kills living creatures steals commits sexual con misconduct uses false harsh nonsensical speech covetous malicious with the wrong view right so these people they out of pain if they do that they experience the pain while doing this and they experience pain because uh, as buddha said that we experience the fruits of our karma right and we are reborn according to the fruits of our karma not anything else that's the first practice second practice is which is pleasant now and results in future pain now pleasant now means if anyone with pleasure and happiness kills living creatures steals commits sexual misconduct same thing it he commits with pleasure so committing this thing with pleasure gives the person pleasure that means some people find you know uh, joy in harming people or in stealing you know they commit it through pleasure but then the result is pain right then third what is the way of taking up practices that is painful now but results in future pleasure now what is the thing that is painful now but results in pleasure it's when someone in pain and sadness person is in pain and sadness right person is not in a good mental state but he he doesn't kill living creatures steal or commit sexual misconduct they don't use speech that is false divisive harsh nonsensical and they are contented calm hearted with the right view because of these things they experience they experience pain and sadness but when their body breaks up they are reborn in a good place they are reborn in a heavenly realm this is called the way of taking up practices that is painful now but results in future so that is what buddha is saying and even if life is painful right now we can still commit to living the life in accordance with the dhamma and that will result in a better life fourth is basically taking up practices that is pleasant now and results in future pleasure it's when someone with a pleasure and happiness the person kind contented calm in his mind and he doesn't do uh, kill living creatures steal or commit sexual misconduct don't use wrong speech because of these things they experience pleasure and happiness when their body breaks up they are born in a good place of heaven realm right so important thing what my understanding is or my takeaway is that irrespective of how how your life is right now do not create anything present karma which can cause pain or suffering for others and resolve to create you know good karma right uh, and do not create good karma and refrain from killing stealing what buddha said the five precepts follow the five precepts to the t right that will ensure that we will not be reborn in a bad place will be reborn in a good place we will we will we, we can keep continuing our journey of learning the teachings of the dhamma and achieving final nibbana right okay then buddha is giving some analogies here to explain all the four paths so the first path where it is uh, 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 painful in the start and painful at the end buddha is saying suppose there was some bitter gourd mixed with poison so the man uh, comes to it and man drinks it Uh, it is unappetizing also it's not good in taste and he will die so he doesn't experience taste good taste while he drinks it and also it results in his death so that is the like a practice which is good uh, bad in the uh, painful in the start and painful in the end second example buddha said that bronze cup of beverage which has nice color and aroma uh, but it was uh, mixed with poison so man comes and uh, it, and it has appetizing so it is very good in drinking but it results in death so that is a practice that is good in the start but bad in the end painful in the end third is where buddha said about painful in the now but has a very good result at the end is like a fermented urine mixed with different medicines right a man with jaundice would come along which is like the worst medicine right uh, they, he would say that this is the fermented urine it is unappetizing in the now but it will, it will help you cure the illness and then he drinks it so unappetizing painful in the now but it will help in the end that's the third fourth is buddha gives the analogy of a curd honey ghee and molasses all mixed together then a man with bloody dysentery would come along and 
and and he drinks it and it's appetizing while at the time of drinking and it also cures the red sentry right so so that will be a, a, a an energy for a practice which is good at the start and good at the end then buddha finally says buddha compares this the, the, his teaching with the teachings of other ascetics buddha says it's like the time after the rainy season when the sky is clear and cloudless and when the sun rises it dispels all the darkness from the sky as it shines and glows and radiates in the same way this way of taking the practices that is the pleasant now and result in future pleasure dispels the doctrines of various other ascetics and brahmins as it shines and glows and radiates so this is basically the knowledge the precious knowledge the precious dhamma teaching of the buddha that is basically takes away all the dark clouds and radiates it like the sun so friends we are very very fortunate that we are in this teaching of the buddha let's devote ourselves completely to the teaching of the buddha and follow this teaching follow the noble eightfold path and commit ourselves to the teaching i hope this video was useful useful if they have any insights reflections do share in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye